All right, good evening, guys. Good evening. We just got our daily close five minutes ago. Five minutes ago, we got our close. So before we get started, make sure to, oh, that's not it at all. Let me remove that real quick. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and get you the link real quick for the YouTube or for the Discord. I said I talked about. Yeah, I can't talk today. What is going on to me? All right, let's see. Get going there. There we are. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let's go ahead and throw our link into the Discord server. I have a brand new Discord server. If you guys have not joined yet, make sure make sure to get in there. All right, let's see YouTube. Let's go ahead and share. I just got it set up, guys. So give me a second. Get everything set up for everybody. My channel right here. Just got it set up, guys. So oh, here we go. Going to copy and paste into the Discord group so everyone can see. Everyone, all right, awesome. There we are. We are in. We are in. Let's get going. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in this sucker. So we did get our daily close seven or five minutes ago, and we've already had some sort of a dump across the board. Not too surprising because usually what happens is uh, during whenever you go towards the daily close, there's a lot of market fuckery to paint the candles a certain direction. And it looks to me like they were holding the price up so that they can just dump it right on us later. So that's what it looks like. Um, let's go ahead and dive in here. Nothing too different than what we normally do. Obviously, we have our system, we have our style, and it works. So on the daily, we have this candle right, or this a breaker. And as you guys see, we fell right through. So I was hoping, I was assuming we were going to continue up. However, we did not. We fell right through. This is awesome for our altcoins. I'm super, super happy to see this. That means that this breaker did not really provide much resistance at all. Um, you go on the low time frame, you can see it tried to. However, it just basically collapsed right through, which is awesome. So our next point of interest is going to be right here. And as we know, the the the, the further down the uh, the, alt, the Bitcoin dominance chart drops the more money is going into our altcoins. So if you're an altcoin trader like I am, I want this number to drop and drop and drop and drop and don't stop dropping. So, so far this looks really, really good. Um, you go to the four hour, you guys can really see this. It went up and now it's having one hell of a tracer right back down. This looks awesome for us guys. Like this is super, super exciting. Um, on Facebook, I actually posted, I said, hey, um, you guys, what is the reason? Let me go find it real quick, actually. I said, I am bullish. Yeah, also looking really good right now. Why do you think I'm saying that? Post a chart here. The reason is because of this chart right here. The Bitcoin dominance chart looks extremely bullish right now. We're just collapsing right through. This is awesome. Our altcoins look fantastic because this chart keeps dropping. So as long as it keeps dropping, like that, that's incredible. That's awesome. Um, on the, uh, let's see, let's go to our weekly breaker. You guys can see this is our weekly breaker. I assume that it would reject here and at least consolidate or reject and keep falling through. The total two, we've actually went above the weekly breaker so far and are doing it pretty damn handsomely. So we have four days, uh, we have four days for the next close. On the daily, we did not get the close above this daily breaker. Little bit concerning, but I'm not too concerned yet. So, so far, we have not gotten a bullish close above this daily breaker, and we also have not closed the weekly yet. However, we have some really good signs across the market. Um, let's go ahead and dive into Bitcoin, see how it's doing. And Bitcoin is still underneath our 200 moving average. This is so incredibly important, guys. The 200 moving average is my primary indicator that I use just to see what's going on in the market. It establishes my bullishness or bearish bias. Well, since we're below it, I have to remain bearish on Bitcoin. I have to, guys. I don't have an option here because that's what my indicators tell me and I am a, I'm a disciplined, uh, logical trader and I do not 
stray from what the chart's telling me. And this chart is still telling me it's going to continue going down. Now, my, my bias is invalidated on two things. One, get a daily close above this 200 moving average. That's really, really good. Furthermore, get a, a weekly close of four days above this purple block. Get above that purple block, I am super bullish, okay? Super bullish with a close above this purple block. Now, if we close like right here above this uh, the solid candle, I would be bullish, okay, I would be. But if I get a close above this, I would be super bullish. So right now, this weekly has not closed. I really wanna see it close at the bare minimum above this level and preferably a lot higher, right? So on the, on the daily, I need to get a close above the 200 moving average to get bullish in the daily time frame. And on the weekly, I need to get a close above the entire purple breaker. And that's where we are at, guys. Like this, this is what I'm looking at. Everything else right now is just noise. Now, if we do not get it close above here, which as of right now, we have not. In, in fact, if anything, this is a pretty damn bearish retest right now. And when you have a retest going into a major, major support level or resistance level and it fails, that is a super bullish or a super bearish sign. This does not look good for us right now. So my bias right now is we are going to continue down. Now, where we're going to go and how far down, I don't know yet. We really don't know yet. Um, this breaker is pretty obvious. I do like this breaker as a initial point of breakdown. So what is that, like 37,000? I think that makes a lot of sense. If we go to the four hour, let's see if we got anything else on here. Um, I think this entire 36,000 region looks fine. Yeah, I think this entire 36,000 region looks totally fine. And if we lose that, then we're going to have some problems because then we're going to keep dropping. And if we do keep dropping, I think it's very realistic we come down here and at least touch or clear this capitulation kick, uh, cap capitulation candle wick. I think that's a very logical spot to assume. So something like maybe like this, let's go and draw it out real quick for a path, something like here, back up. Come back down here, clear it, right? Preferably clear both. I think that makes a lot of sense because this is the yearly open, and the yearly open usually also provides quite a bit of support and resistance. So if we go below here and here, I think we're going to activate a lot of stop losses. So go down here, and then we continue back up to the major uh, continuation upward. I think this right now is my primary bias. I think there's a lot of liquidity down here. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, retest that yearly open just makes a lot of sense as well. The cool part about it is this weekly candle doesn't close for four more days. So this thing can completely collapse and retrace in four days. I think it's very realistic. So that's my current bias right now on what, what I expect to happen. And obviously we'll see what happens. So something like this where it drops, yeah, where it drops, hit this level, come back up and then continuation down. I think that's what I'm looking for right now. Um, and, and we'll see what happens, but that's what my current bias, just because of what the indicators are telling me. So also looking good, but Bitcoin does not. Uh, what do you say? Let's get one more dump to 33,000. Is that possible? I think, ooh, that's my three-day breaker, isn't it? We close. You know, I can see that being realistic. I think, I think, I think it would really fake people out of a camp here in just one of 33. I think somewhere around there does also, I think there's a very legitimate chance of that happening. I really do. What level is that? 33 right here? Yeah, I like that. Honestly, I do. I think that would also make a lot of sense. I think that would really mess up a lot of people, but I think a drop to about 33 also is not out of the question. I, I agree with you, man. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense as well. Now, I really would love to see the SFP. I think an SFP right here would be amazing. Now, we may not get all the way down there, and that's very possible. So we'll see what happens. Um, now, if we lose this and keep going down, where, where are our major support levels, right? Where's the major levels that we're looking at? Well, the major levels right now is this breaker right here at 26,000. You're going to have this massive consolidation right here at... 22 to 23,000. That makes a lot of sense. And then we start going to some really, really long time frame stuff. So right here, I think that makes a lot of sense as well, which coincides with the previous all time high, right? 
So that would be about where the previous all-time high is. Is that possible? Yes, it absolutely is. You'd be 27,000. And that's, I think it's reasonable as well. I really do. Any of these levels are very realistic. And I think if we do come down here and we do clear this capitulation candle, it could get very violent very quickly. And um, we've already seen how violent it could be, right? If you were here, like, <laughs> freak, like, this was violent, right? That entire drop was really bad. And this drop right here was just brutal, absolutely brutal. Uh, if you're on the Facebook page, I was definitely giving you guys the play-by-plays and stuff. And I was okay because I told you guys, hey, this is this is expected. This is something that we definitely does happen um, in crypto. We do have these massive, massive candles. Absolute liquidations, completely clear out every long on the board, completely reset the funding, wipe out all liquidity. Yeah, this is stuff that does happen. So, and if you look, like we've had one heck of a run lately, right? It's been a really nice run. However, it's only that much of the retracement it's really not that strong now there are some other other coins other charts that have done tremendously better and have retraced like some of them actually retraced the entire dump not all of them have but some have right um so yeah you just gotta it's it's not that this is not that much of a retracement yet we have not reached that much of a retracement now let's see what we got right here i'm gonna call this the impulse okay so usually a retracement will get to the 0.382 level. And if it's super bullish, it will actually go all the way up to the uh, the 6.18 level or 0.618, the golden pocket zone. So right here and right here, those are two primary spots for any sort of retracement without any sort of other indicators being thrown on there. These two levels provide instant uh, support resistance. And the 42,000 level, makes a lot of sense it does like this level makes a ton of sense i think that it can come up to the 0.382 level you tap here and then continue down I think that makes a ton of sense on this market and uh yeah we'll, we'll see what happens go guys like but until we get in close above the 200 moving average right i can't be bullish and then furthermore until we get in close above this breaker on the weekly i still can't be bullish on a high time frame those are my two levels so um yeah that's all right with that all right let's see what sort of charts you guys want me to do what charts i know that if i remember correctly shelton you gave me some earlier didn't you no george did all right george gave me ada vet xrp and ethereum all right let's go ahead and dive in here and really start going into these charts and if you guys are on discord you can also drop me stuff on discord i'm watching that as well so uh if you guys are on discord go ahead and give me a hi whatever you guys can tag me you want a chart, put it in the general chat over here. So uh, uh, put chart request here. There you go. All right, I'll be watching that as well. So if you guys have anything, go ahead and throw it my way. And I'm going to just get to charting and get you guys taken care of. So uh, the first one, I believe, was ADA, right? I think it was ADA, right? Yeah, ADA, that, and XRP. So let's go ahead and dive into it. ADA was looking really good. All right, like it's looking very healthy. I'm very happy with the amount of progress it's made but <laughs> oh we got the close oh man okay all right all right ada look at this ada's doing good we got the daily close above our daily breaker that looks amazing now here's the other problem we run into this breaker is now officially reclaimed you can get rid of that however <laughs> hate to say it this one has not been reclaimed. We have not gotten above that level yet. We even went above it, but we cleared inside of it. So this is not a good sign. So we cleared one of them. We did not clear the major one. So we still have more work to do on ADA right now. Um, that was a good start. We've had a massive run so far, but yeah, we still have work to do. Let's go to the four hour. Um, you can call this a break or two. I like that. And actually, yeah, this is what it rejected off already. Yeah, it was really good. I like that. So yeah, I, I think I'm going to get rid of it just because it's already been retested once. But I think that we need to get above this breaker to actually be cleared from this uh, level. Let's go to the BTC pairing real quick, see how we're doing. Um, A to BTC. Let's see, let's see, let's see. On the daily. This is my void chart, right? Yep, look at this massive void we're talking about. This is before the massive drop, right? I told you guys. We were going to teleport from here up to here to there. If you go to the weekly, you can see we teleported from here to 
almost the top, right? And then Bitcoin just collapsed and messed the whole game up, but we just teleported up. That's exactly what I was expecting. When you have a big void like this, this is what happens. The reason why it's a void is because you have no breakers this entire area. The price dropped so quickly and so violently, it actually had no sort of resistance or support. So because of that, it just completely collapsed. So yeah, um, but yeah, we're, uh, we're transporting, we're teleporting back up. So if we go back to the four hour chart, we can see how we're doing. Um, this is a nice little breaker, I like that. Let's retest it too. I think Ada looks healthy, I really do. I think this looks really healthy. And we have not touched the top yet. Now, when we get up here, this is a major level. And the reason why, if you go back to the weekly chart, you guys can see that is the very clear breaker. The only breaker we have on here is this one. This entire region, we have nothing except that. This is the target everyone's been looking at to dump off some position. So I would definitely be looking to sell some right here. I might actually sell some myself, honestly. I think that'd be a really good opportunity to transfer some of it over to Bitcoin because what this chart telling you, how, how does ADA compare to Bitcoin? So if you come into a resistance, what that means is that from this point forward, you would expect Bitcoin to outperform ADA at this level, right? That's what that means. Now, obviously, if we bust right through it, then I would be looking to add position here if I could to continue the ADA uh, just completely annihilating the chart. And we're almost at the top. Like that's 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 a one hell of a bowl right here. You guys see that? It's incredible. So this is almost a complete retracement of the entire drop on the BTC pairing. Yeah, we're pretty close. And then once it gets above there, then we're in price discovery. And then who freaking knows what happens, right? We don't we don't know. Um, I think a good example of that, if I remember correctly. Uh, Link? Yeah, I mean, Link's a good example. I mean, obviously, it's not exactly what we're looking for. But the point is, is like, you guys can see every time it, every time it re-cleared the previous high, it just exploded. It just exploded, right? And that's what I'm expecting for ADA if we get back above that level. Uh, waiting for 205 to get some. Let's we'll see if we can get that. Let's we'll see if that's feasible. Oh, to, to, to take profit. Got it. Let's see if we can get there. Um, let's go to the four hour. 205. I'm assuming that you're looking at this point of breakdown, maybe? Maybe. I think that's what you're looking at. Um, this is a clear point of breakdown. I do like that. If that's what you're targeting, like that's around the 205 region. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. Honestly, I do. Um, and fall, drop it down to 160. That's very realistic. Make that extremely clear. That is very realistic on this chart. Um, there's not much support below us. There really isn't. And I think that 60. Yeah, I can see that providing some sort of support. Maybe this right here. I'm interested. Yeah, I like it. I think the 160 makes a lot of sense. I like that, honestly. Because you have some really good interaction here. Because you came above it, went back below it, tested it, tested it, dropped, tested it, tested it, came back above. So could it come back here and retest? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yep, I think it makes a lot of sense. I like I like the the one the 160 region. 160 to 164. I think that does make a lot of sense to try to add some more position here. All right, let's go to the next one. VET. V-E-T. Um, so on the VET pairing, let's see where we're at. V-E-T. I haven't really charted this much, this much, so I'm glad we're actually going over it. Um, I do own quite a bit of VET, so I've really sort of been ignoring it for a while. The market's just not really my friend on this. Ooh, we got a close above there. All right, this looks good because you have this breaker, very clear breaker on the daily level. You now have closed above that breaker on the daily. This is a closed candle. This looks really, really good. So because we have nothing else here, we have what's called a void, right? Yeah, yeah. Remember what that happened with the ADA? I expect this to teleport from here to there. So I think that I'd be looking to take profit right about there. Um, you have this right here. I don't suspect it to cause that many problems, but it's very possible. And also... These long wicks to the upside have pretty much, I would say, invalidated this for the most part. So I think that we're going to go from here up to here. I'd be looking to take profits right in that area. So that on the BTC pairing, or the US dollar pairing, that's what I'm looking at. And on the BTC pairing, oh, I don't like it. Clear it, start from scratch. All right, let's see what we're looking at now. Uh, weekly. Mm. This entire region is a breaker by definition. Give it drop. 
break in price, continuation down. So this entire area is definitely a, some sort of a uh, uh, some sort of a consolidation or a breaker, and I like that. Now let's go to the daily three day. Actually, see what we got here. Uh, yeah, still same levels. Not very clean so far. Okay, there we go. Finally, we got something. That is a clear point of breakdown. Okay. Clear point of breakdown. Oh man. Do I want that? That's what I got. This is it, guys. Like, I don't really see anything else that really just stands out to me. So this is the macro level. The, the entirety of it is the macro level that I see on the three-day, right? No, weekly. Yeah, it was a two-week level, right? The macro is right here. This is our primary consolidation cluster. And you have the point of breakdown on the daily. Daily. Point of breakdown. And you have a daily breaker right there. So we need to get a daily closes above these levels. So right now we've closed above this one. And now we're coming to here. So what we're doing, just like in the US dollar pairing, we're ranging between these two, right? So, oh, missed it. Ah, what am I doing? US dollar pairing, go to the bet chart. You have a range, you have a, an area, a space, a void, a gap, right? This is considered a range, but when you're in between two major, uh, in between a support and a resistance level, a major level like these two are, you're just ranging between. So you're ranging on the US dollar pairing and you are also ranging in between the uh, the BTC pairing. So yeah, we're just ranging at this point. So um, yeah, that's basically it. I think I'd be looking to take profits here and I'd be looking to buy them here. And until we pick a direction, I think both was a good option. Buy here, sell here. And on the US dollar pairing, <clears throat> buy here, sell here. And if we get above here, then what you can do is get some sort of a, here we go. Come up here, what is go? Oh, magnet, damn it, there we go. Come up here, clear it. Right. So when you get above it, you're like, oh, OK, we busted above it. When it comes back down here to retest it, because it normally does, that's when you buy and then you continuation up. I think that makes a lot of sense on how I play this candle or how I play this chart. So you buy here, you sell here. But when you get above it, you would rebuy this area because it should be a flip support level. Um, and then this. So this right here will be a point of breakdown. That being said, you have lots of little like breakers up and down this sucker. And with how bullish the market would be if we dig it above this level, I would probably not even look to take profits at this point because I think it, it could really just explode. Uh, especially if you look at the, B, the BTC pairing. The BTC pairing looks so healthy at that level, I would just let it ride. Um, all right, XRP, woo baby, now we're talking. I love my XRP. Okay, XRP has been doing some cool things lately. I've been charting this thing a lot, so I'm really, really in tune with what this market is looking at. So, you have, let's go to the hourly chart. Yes, okay. So there's a couple of things I'm looking at right now. You connect these, can, oh, back to the magnet again. On the hour, on, on the, uh, actually, I take that back. It wasn't that. There we go. Okay, on the log chart, you connect these two candles together. Is that right? It's just so weird how it has it set up. Okay, no, I was wrong. All right. What am I doing? I had a plan here. I promise I did. What was I doing? I had a plan. Well, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what I was doing with this line. I'm just going to get rid of it now for now. All right. Either way, let's, let's go back in reverse and try this all over again. So, weekly, nothing. I'm already charted, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, this one's already been charted. So, you have a daily breaker right there. We've already, we've already bounced off here. This is an absolutely, absolutely beautiful bounce off here. This is a monthly level, and this is a weekly level, okay? Monthly level up here, weekly level up here. We came in here, we rebounced off of it, and this weekly level was tested once, twice, three times, came back, now did a retest of it, and continuation upward. XRP is bullish and for damn good reason. This was an absolutely gorgeous retest. You cannot ask for a better setup than this.
It's not possible. This is absolutely beautiful. Okay. Um, so right now we are stuck below this daily breaker and we've been playing around with it a little bit today. We've actually tested it and we cannot get it back above it. So we're sort of in a, in a weird spot right now. What was that level? Hourly? Mm, two hour? There it was. Yeah, two hour level. That's what I was messing around with. So this two hour level, we've been playing around with it a lot as well. I think now it's been invalidated. So yeah, we're sort of just ranging between these two levels still, right? And we are getting some sort of a double top pattern here and we are starting to beat it. We are starting to beat against it. So I think that eventually we will bust above it. And if you go to the, yes, yeah, so this is a very, very bullish reaction. Oh, also the other part of this reaction, it bounced off the 200 moving average as well. Like it does not get any cleaner than this. So weekly breaker, daily 200 moving average, monthly breaker, went into it, rejected after having one test, two tests, and three tests right here. Just absolutely gorgeous. You cannot ask for a better play than that. So because of that, this, this chart is absolutely exploding upward, which is what we should be expecting for that. Now, if we get above this daily breaker, there is nothing but free skies, okay? Nothing but free skies. So if we get above like 118, this thing is going to absolutely explode. Um, so yeah, it looks really, really good. XRP, BTC. Find a clean chart. That's a clean chart. I like this. Okay. This is a very obvious levels. Daily, weekly. Yep, weekly. Let me annotate real quick. Weekly breaker. Daily breaker. Ah, I can't, I can't type today. Daily breaker. Um, daily breaker. Yep, yep, yep. All right, awesome. It looks, looks perfect. So this is what we're. So right now we are currently below all this resistance. So it is a little bit concerning right now. It's gonna be very tough to get back over. This blue line actually has held a lot of significance over the course of this this coin. So you see how it interacts really, really well. And I've had this this line drawn out for a long time. And yet it just keeps interacting with it really, really well. So like right here, it went above it, went back below it, retested, came back above, retested from the bottom side, went up, and now we've collapsed back into it. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of messing around with this area. And so um, really, really important, really important level. We've still held it. Everything looks totally fine here, but we're sort of ranging between this level and getting above these levels as well. So um, yeah. I just have to say about XRP. So my expectations are for it to go continue going back up. I think it makes a lot of sense at this level, uh, but we'll see what happens though. So we need to get above this this daily breaker, and if we do, I think we're going to absolutely just explode. Um, H bar. Ow, are we collapsing? Really? Of course. Bitcoin. Come on, man. You can wait till the video is on. Asshole. All right. Yeah, Bitcoin is starting to collapse a little bit. I mean. Like I said, the bias is down, guys, and that, that's that's all there is to it. We are the bias is still down. So if this thing utterly collapses, like I'm not even that surprised. It is what it is, though. So we'll see what happens. Let's go to the Ethereum pairing. I know that was something we want to look at. Um, on Ethereum, if I remember correctly, we got a really good close today, didn't we? Yes, we did. We have a beautiful close. This is a massive daily breaker. <clears throat> ah. Oh, Bailey Breaker, uh, CTSI. Sure, absolutely. I will check it out. All right, Daily Breaker, okay? This is a very obvious one. That's really the only other thing on here. We have this breaker and that breaker. All right, that's all we got on this chart. Nothing else. It's really clean. <clears throat> so, cut above it, <clears throat> closed above it, and now we're coming back in for a retest. This is gorgeous. This is beautiful. Like, you can't get any better than this, guys. So we came back above, now we're coming in for a retest, and I would hope <clears throat> that this level, that this level holds. So I would highly, I am pretty damn confident we will not lose, I would say, anything lower than this, at least in the daily. So by tomorrow in 24 hours, in 23 hours, 24 minutes, I fully expect us to be back above here. And if we are not above there, then we can look at some problems. Like we may actually have some issues going on in this chart, but right now this is completely okay. If it does collapse in here, that's fine, right? It's not a huge issue, we're fine. 
Ethereum looks really good. And the cool thing about Ethereum is Ethereum is the leader of the altcoins. Ethereum is the leader. So whatever Ethereum does, altcoins tend to follow, which is awesome. So if Ethereum is bullish, the rest of the altcoin market is also bullish. Let me see how the uh, Bitcoin dominance chart's reacting right now. It is pushing up, isn't it? Motherfucker. All right. So this is good, actually. This is a good thing. Maybe we're going to see a dump while we're on this uh, stream. Let's see. So this right now is coming back into our breaker. We know it's a daily breaker. And we know it should provide a lot of resistance. So right now, even though it's moving up, we would assume that it doesn't get any path, like maybe into the bottom side of this breaker and that's it. So, and whenever we get up here, we would then assume that altcoins would start taking over the market. And if altcoins are taken back over the market, that probably means that Bitcoin is almost done dropping because in times of volatility, alts take, uh, take a higher hit. So I would assume that whenever this thing gets up close to here, that the, the dump on Bitcoin is basically over. That's my assumption. Um, all right, let's see. Ethereum, let's keep going back on that. Keep talking about it. So yeah, come back in here, retest that breaker. That's totally healthy, no issue at all. I have no problem with this price action. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous price action. Uh, let's go to the BTC pairing on here. Ethereum, BTC, ooh, okay. I like this too. Is the daily? No. Weekly? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So did we reclaim this? No, because this is a weekly level and we've only got a daily close over it. So we have four days before it becomes an actual weekly close. However, comma, this is still a really good sign that we were able to get above it. Um, any other breakers in here at all? No, we don't have nothing. So the only support we have is a come all the way down into here. That's all we've got. I'm gonna get rid of that because that was obviously old. So yeah, um, this is a solid breaker on the daily time frame. Uh, this seven region, I'm not entire. Oh, that was a range that we had established. If you go back to the weekly chart, you guys can see a range that was established on uh, Ethereum. It's not too apparent, but it definitely is something that did exist back in the day. So basically what I was drawing that out for is because Ethereum stayed inside here, bouncing from side to side. And then when it came over here, it bounced over here some more. And that's why. Basically inside of here was the mass consolidation for Ethereum. And that's why I drew these two lines. So these lines don't really mean too much necessarily. But uh, yeah. All right. I will get Matic after CTSI. I got you though, brother. No worries at all. All right. Um... Yeah, I think it's fine. I would not be surprised to come back in here, retest here. Um, but yeah, I think it looks totally healthy. There it looks fine. All right, let's go to CTSI. I don't know if I've charted that one before. CTSI. Oh, I have. Okay. I don't know what I said about it, but I've charted it. So that's cool, I guess. What's the longer price action? There we are. All right, we do have price action here. Wait, what? What? When did I draw this? Whoa, no way. I drew it way back here. Oh, what in the hell? No way. All right, let's talk about, oh, I do remember drawing this now. Yes, I do. Okay, I was talking about a clean uh, support resistance flop. That's what I was doing. I was talking about how you have a very clear level right here that um, once you break above, is going to have some violence. I'm pretty sure when I when I made this, it was it, I was in California, so that was the right time frame. So I drew this level way back way back here, and I said, "Hey, we've hit it, we've hit it, we're hitting it again." Next time we get up there, I would expect it to break through, and sure enough, we did. And then if you look at the rest of the price action, look at this. This is insane. It came back in, retested it. And what it do, it bounced off it. Why did it bounce off there? Because this was a prior resistance. We broke above. So that means now this is becoming a support level. And when it becomes a support, and when it confirmed it, it shot up. And whenever that major crash happened on Bitcoin, where did it collapse to? The major support level, right? Like this makes so much sense. So whenever these major crashes happen, all you have to do is zoom out and you can see where they're going to fall into. Wow, I really have not touched this chart in forever. But I, I yeah, there you go. 
guys, this stuff works. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about this, man. It's insane. I saw 0.44 is a level. Yeah, it absolutely is a level. Like, make that extremely clear. It's perfect. It's absolutely gorgeous. Did you get filled on this as a, when it dipped back down? I hope so, man. That is a beautiful entry if you did. But yeah, I think it looks really healthy. Um, yeah, CTSL looks really good. I got nothing about that, man. Let's go to the BTC pairing, see how it looks on there. Um, CTSI, BTC, because as you know, we must check both charts. Oh, this looks parabolic. This does look parabolic. Okay. That's a pretty clean retest, too. Mm. All right. So it's not, it's clean, but it's not perfect. Uh, let me I show you this real quick. Let me find the actual curvature line. There it is. So but if you go here, no, oh, other direction. All right. And what I'm trying to make here is the actual parabolic curve, right? And basically what we're looking at is this right here. You guys see how that's a parabola. So whenever it's a parabola like that, that means that you would expect it to continue going up. And um, this is maintaining the parabola really well. And the cool part about parabolas is that that means that it is not a corrective, a corrective structure because corrective structures tend to channel, okay? So if you, if you could take a channel, a parallel channel, and draw it, uh, like let's say like here to here, and then make a channel, if it stays inside this channel, then that would be a corrective structure, okay? However, when you have a parabola, what that means is an impulsive structure. And impulses versus corrective structures is very important to understand. So like, for instance, if you go over here to uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin actually made a massive channel on the way down. All right, here, right here. Okay, look at this. How do we know this was a corrective structure? Well, the reason why is because this price action turned into a channel. See that? How it sticks in that channel. Now, we did have some deviation from the range, but as a whole, it actually interacted with this channel extremely well. So because of that, because it was channeling, you knew that this was a corrective structure. And whenever it broke out, you'd expect some sort of uh, impulsiveness to it. We haven't really got the impulsiveness yet, but the point is, is that if this was a channel, which we're assuming, that means the next movement will be an impulsive movement up. Um, another one we can tell a uh, Bitcoin was a channel, or another big thing that happened with channels is going to be this right here. This was a corrective channel as well. And you see how I have just random channels all over the place. This was a channel. Okay, and this was going up in a channel manner. And you can see how we actually had a decrease in volume. And if you go back and let the Facebook page and really dive in there, I talked about how I expected this to break down, right? And sure enough, it did break down because I expected this was the impulse down, correct channel up, mass continue and a continuation downward. And I think it's safe to say we did get a continuation downward. I think it's pretty damn safe to say, right? Um, yeah. All right, so CTSI, uh, and the cool part about that, reason why I brought that up is because CTSI is not making a channel, which is great, because that means that it is an impulsive movement. So I would expect that this movement to basically continue doing its rounded structure like that until it stops. <laughs> That's crazy to say, but like here, rounded structure, but whenever it does crash, parabolic movements crash very, very harshly. So you have to be very careful on that. But right now, I think this still looks very healthy. Uh, daily. Yeah, it looks healthy. I honestly do. I like it. I even like this. This is, looks like a channel as well. No way. Dive in here real quick. I think it is. Uh, not really. No, I take that back. It's sort of a channel, but not really. But the point is, is that this is definitely some sort of a corrective movement. So it was impulsed up. And now you have sort of correct movement here. The reason you can tell it's, impul it's an impulsive movement because you have high volume on this increase. And it's a corrective because even though it's downtrending, you're losing volume. And when you lose volume on a downtrend, that's actually a bullish indicator. So the next direction I would expect it to go is going to be up, right? Makes sense. Impulse up, corrective down, continuation up. So yeah, this looks very healthy. I like it.
I do a lot. All right. Um, Matic. Okay. Matic. Awesome. 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 Oh, yes. I love me some Matic right now. It is on fire. It is absolute fire. I did not buy any. I have absolutely zero Matic right now. It's insane, but I have none. So, um, yeah, I have no Matic. It sucks. That's what it is. That being said, the, the, the structure of the chart has been very nice to play. It really has been. So if you go over here to the three-day, yes, the three-day. This right here was my level I was looking at uh, for uh, the only breaker we really have. This is the only breaker. This nine, these, nine day of, these nine days worth of candles are the only breakers we actually have until we get all the way down here. So if you were to play that and have your position set on this only breaker, you would have got a really damn good entry on Matic, right? Anyone check out RLC? I'll do that afterwards. So yeah, once it hits here, it bounced off here, right? Um, now on the daily, we had this level right here. This is our only daily level. Why? Because Matic moved so quickly up and back down, it didn't actually have any time to actually build any support or resistance levels. So because of that, or any consolidation, this was the only consolidation that we had. So I assumed it would come up here and reject. And on a low time frame, it actually did. It came up here and found consolidation again because what was previous consolidation usually will turn into consolidation again. All right, awesome. Now, something else is pretty cool I like about this chart is if you go to the Fibonacci retracement tool all the way down, this candle from the top of the from the top of the impulse down to the bottom of the, of the corrective structure came all the way up and tapped this uh, the 0.786 or the the point. 618 Fibonacci golden pocket area, which is really, really cool and rejected. So if you, you could have put just put this on there, this, this overall uh, chart, and you could have sold in the golden pocket area because that is always a very solid support or resist, depending upon what side you're coming in from. So there we go. Pretty neat. Um, so what's going to happen now? I mean, this structure looks healthy. Like I, it, it does look healthy. I think right now we only have the only serious level we have left in here is going to be this. That's it. That's the only level we got. And so far, we have rejected. But this is only a four-hour block. That's all we have left. So this looks healthy. If it comes down into here, I will be buying. I will be. I will sell other positions so that I can buy somatic between uh, 163 and about 182. I will be buying if it gets a dip in this area. This is too bullish of a chart not to. Now, um, so that's very realistic. And then once we do bust above, who knows, okay? Who freaking knows at this point? Um, I am not a big fan of making a price target. I think that gets you subconsciously into a mindset to where you have to sell at a certain point and you will subconsciously uh, want to sell at predetermined price points. So instead what I do is I literally just sit on my hands and wait. I cut my losses early and I let my winners run. And when they do start running, I'm looking for signs of weakness. Major bearish divergences, uh, some sort of uh, Fibonacci extension levels that make a lot of sense. Um, do you running into some very high time frame trend lines or something like that? Like, yeah, then I'll start busting my position. Whenever I start seeing weakness in the market where it does have a major crash, I'll be looking to sell the retracement. But I would not be looking to sell this too early because while every while every while all the other coins are still lagging, Matic is on a freaking tear, busting through this sucker. We've almost had price discovery again after this massive, massive crash. So this looks very healthy. I would not be looking to sell anytime soon. I'll tell you that right now. I would be looking to add more position in down here if I get it though. All right, um, let's see, that's Matic. Let's look at the BTC pairing real quick as well, just for consistency's sake. Oh, this looks gorgeous. Yes, it does. This looks absolutely beautiful. Okay, absolutely gorgeous V-shaped reversal pattern. Um, and that's what you're looking for. And if you look, this is also the highest volume. This candle right here has more volume than that massive dump. That's awesome. So when you have massive volume like that on an up candle, that's showing a ton of strength in the market. And as you guys see, massive V-shaped reversal candle. This is this is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. What you want to see. Uh, let's go to four hour. Yeah, V-shaped reversal. Like it doesn't get any easier than that. Um, I think you are currently resting or retesting this level. 
And that's all you got left, guys. Like this is literally it. We're above all of our major uh, major resistance levels. So US dollar pairing looks good. BTC pairing looks good. I would try to get an entry over here on this level. But man, that is just challenging at this point. It would take Bitcoin really dumping to even get an opportunity at that. So Maddox looks really good. I honestly do like what Maddox bringing on the table right now. All right, let's see. RLC. I have not looked at this one. Let's look at it real quick. I'm going to go to the friends one. And I might move it over. RLC. What is this? RLC UST. Okay. I don't know anything about this chart whatsoever. I like it. All right. Let's look at what we're looking at right now. Weekly chart. Wow. That's a hell of an increase. Okay. So increase massive impulse even more volume on the decrease not that uncommon right now um three week one week huh. daily hmm <laughs> oh wait there's a trend in it yeah it is okay got it now i see why it bounced there okay if you go over here That's all I got. It's not beautiful, but that's all I got. And that's really all I got. So you have you have this horizontal support level. And this is really all I can find that really makes sense for uh, this chart on the US dollar pairing. So what happened here is it basically, it was, it was resistance, it was resistance, resistance, came back over here, resistance, came back above, retested from the upside to confirm it as support, accelerated upwards, and then came back here and bounced back off of this previously reclaimed resistance level. So the price action looks healthy. The market structure looks healthy. The problem I'm having with this wait, log chart where maybe? No. A little bit hard to read, honestly. It really is. It's a little bit hard to read. Hmm. 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 So, this is my thoughts right now. Okay, on this chart, I think that oh, you have this. Okay. Well, you do have this pretty major level. It should be on the three day as well, right? It's not just one day. You have this major one love one day level this entire block i think would make sense i think as long as you hold this level up i think it's going to remain bullish i think that's very fair to say um it's making some sort of a consolidation pattern right now it's not perfect but i, I think it's about as good as you're going to get right now yeah i think about as good as you're going to get so we can go over here take off the extensions and then over here, it's a little hard to read, but in general, right there. I think that's basically what we're looking at. Make it a sort of triangle. And I think it's going to break up, break down. If it breaks down, you want to make sure this holds. Um, and if it breaks up, then who knows, really? Who knows? You you really don't have much support or resistance built in here. I don't really like the, uh, the structure of this dump. I think it's a pretty, it's a very harsh rejection so far. Um, clean retest, but it, I, it's really hard to read. I don't see anything on here that really sticks out to me. So RC, RLC, BTC. Let's see if you have anything on there. Oh, this looks healthier. Yeah, this looks healthier. Okay, cool. I can work with this. There we go. Now I have some price action I can work with here. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Got that. Oops. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I like that. I like this. All right, if you go back to the like really high time frame stuff, right? And that's the important thing. So this price action rejected off of here, and this price action rejected off of here. So each time it bounces up, it's making a stronger movement. So when it does that, you would assume that every time it gets through, 
it's basically weakening each one of these resistance levels, which is good. It's really, it's really good. It's what you want to see. Is there a three day, three week? No, well, you have this right here. It's not bad. I do like that. Yeah, like that monthly. Three week and that three week isn't that popular, so I don't like using it very often. But I think it's very. Mm, I'm gonna get rid of it. I don't like it actually. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of it. So right now we have a golden crossover, which except okay. <clears throat> you have the BT, you have the 200 moving average, which is the blue one, right? And you have the 50 EMA, which is the purple one. Whenever the 50 EMA gets above the 200 moving average, that is a sign to institutional investors that there is a lot of bullishness in this market. So whenever that golden crossover happened and we traded above the 200 moving average, what happened? It accelerated the upside, right? And there is a lot of volume on this acceleration. So furthermore, yeah, furthermore on this, ooh, that's actually a good level. I like this. I missed this the first time around. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm looking for right there. And this as well is a good one. Okay. So we have this point of breakdown and we have this breaker. And actually it's a breaker and a breaker. Both of these things are very, very nice. I think this makes a lot of sense. So we originally bounced off this level. We came back and we retested off here. This is very good market structure. I like this. So the BTC pairing, I can get a good reading off of, but the US dollar pairing or US tether pairing, I can't. But the BTC pairing looks very healthy. I like this chart a lot, actually. I'm actually going to get into some myself. Just because of the BTC pairing, it looks, has such clean levels. I like this. Uh, daily, it's a pretty, I mean, that's, that's a bull flag. Goes up, high volume, and pulls up. Consolidation, decreasing slightly. Then, of course, with a decrease, you have a lower volume. This is good. I like this. Yeah, I like that. Perfect. Cool. There you go. Hope that helped you out there. Let's see if I got anything else on here. Any more chart requests? Do you guys have any chart requests you want to have? Let's go back on here. I've already done all of those, right? I think I've answered all the questions. If you guys have any questions, now's the, now's the perfect time to ask them. If not, I'm going to go to sleep. But obviously, it's up to y'all. If you have anything else you want to go over, go for it. But overall, like I've shown you guys, ooh, I do have something to go over, actually. Yes, I do. Okay, this one, okay? EOS. I'm telling you guys, EOS, get ready. This sucker is about to explode. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, go to the log chart, okay? Look at how well this interaction's worked, okay? Touch, 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 touch. Well, almost touch, close enough. Touch again, and we went above it. It exploded upward, and now we have once again re-cleared it, and we also have a daily close above this level, guys. Guys, this is gorgeous. This is really, really good price action. I'm really happy about this. I actually added more EOS uh, yesterday because I thought this looks really healthy and so far it's doing pretty well. It's one of the only ones that's actually holding up right now. Uh, see, I see, uh, EOS, yeah, 5% up. Why? Because the BTC pairing looks amazing. That's why we did it. Everything else is collapsing. Why is OMG popping off? Oh, that's why. Okay, yeah, the reason why is because we have this log chart that's holding on this level really well has been for a long time and we've actually gotten back above it there we go looks good and we also closed above this this uh daily breaker yep there we are so the btc print on this I'm curious omg um i think this is a pretty dangerous time okay this right here is a good uh, warning sign this is a point of breakdown right point of breakdown pretty obvious well, right now we're currently testing it, but we're not actually above it. This is the spot where I'd be looking to, t to lessen my position, not add to right here, because this is a major point of breakdown. Um, now, if we get above that point of breakdown, game freaking on. Absolutely. Like if you get above here, absolutely. Just, it's going to completely explode. We have to use some caution until you do get that close. 
Um, yeah, EOS looks good. What else? What else? What else? I think that's basically it. I mean, I think the market looks fine. I really do. I think that BTC looks like garbage, but the rest of the market looks pretty healthy. And I think that there will be coins that can still take off despite everything going on. Um, oh, that's an ugly, ugly candle. So, yep, that's where I'm at, guys. Well, if you have any questions, like always, let me know. Uh, Discord, right? I have a new Discord server. Y'all need to be in this sucker. Like, I'll be posting in here all the time. Uh, how do I do this? Invite people. Go to the edit invite link. Expire after never. Generate link. Copy. Post this sucker in here. There you go. Join that Discord server. Let's get y'all in there, all right? Like, I'm going to make this thing lit. It's pretty badass. I know I don't have it set up on here, but uh, if you could, you can go on there and you can see on the Discord server all the cool things we have in there. I have a lot, of, a lot of plans for it. Uh, one of my buddies is going to be really putting a lot of work into it, making it look all badass and giving a lot of functionality and everything else. So he's like a software engineer or some craziness. So he's going to really help us out with this. So, um, yeah, well, I'm going to let you guys go. If you have any questions, like always, let me know. And have a great evening, and I will see you all tomorrow. Deuces, boys.